On this week's show, how to find a good property deal in 2020. In the news, we're going to be talking about what happens to the property market post-coronavirus. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. We are here every Friday at 12 p.m. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show, and don't forget to share with all of your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. How are you doing, my friend? You well? I'm very good. I'm very good. Uh, I'm just glad that we're going to get out of this very, very soon. Um, as you can see, things are getting uh, quite busier and busier and busier on the streets. Um, yeah. I think we're going to be out of this very quick. Even McDonald's are opening up. That's dangerous, that is. That's dangerous. You know what I thought was hilarious, right? Now, I've what? not been to McDonald's, but... I cannot believe the amount of people are bitching and moaning because McDonald's have not opened up in their hometown yet. Like I, looked, I literally looked on, the, on Sky News this morning to, just to, to get an update on the coronavirus. And yeah. Two articles dedicated to why is there not a McDonald's opening up near my town? And like people having full-on interviews where they're disgusted that P- McDonald's in Peterborough They've got six branches which are all open and drive throughs are open and everything. But like, there's none in Scotland, there's none in Wales, and there's, there's very few throughout the rest of the country. But Peterborough has got six McDonald's that have opened. And like, there was people, like, there was an outcry over it. Like, it's like, are you really that bothered that, come on. Well, put it more, this way, it's, it's no coincidence that McDonald's is closed and both of us have lost weight. Yeah, but do you know something? <laughs> that is quite funny. Um, <laughs> McDonald's, that... McDonald's and t- t- the thing is, it's oh, takeaway. It's takeaway food, man. Takeaway food. I mean, I know it's like Indian takeaways and stuff, but being out and about in the hustle and the bustle and being able to buy McDonald's and and coffee and stuff, bang, that's closed. Dude, how much weight have you lost since the beginning of the year? Uh, since the beginning of the year, I've lost about eight eight and a half kilograms. Um, okay. How, Since what is that? The beginning of the year. So, because uh, at the beginning of the year, I was like 100, 101, and the, I'm 93 kilograms now. So it's about, so it's 2.2 kilograms to pound. Sorry, 2.2 pounds to kilogram. So Do you know, I, I think we've lost the same amount of weight. I've lost 20 pounds, and it sounds like yours could be about the same. I think you've lost a bit more. I was like 101k, and I'm now 93, so that's 8 times 2.2. I've lost 17 and a half pounds. 17 and a half? Yeah. I've lost 20 pounds since January. It's good. It's huh? like, it is. Thank God, God. Thank God for lockdown. I know. Do you know what I mean? There's so much to be thankful for, of like, at the minute. So much to be thankful for. Like, we were just, I was talking about this on the Academy webinar uh, the other night. Like, really, okay, fine. We're in, the situation's not great. We're all stuck at home. The government couldn't really be doing much more to help us, could they? They're, they're doing a lot to help, like C bills, all the C bills loans, bounce back loans, government government grants, like furlough payments. The government are really bending over backwards to help, um, and I, I'm sick and tired of, of of seeing and listening to people whinging and bitching about how like they they're not getting this, they're not getting that, and they're moaning about the but government. But the, the thing is, though, although the government have been very helpful. Do you think that puts people in a, in a vulnerable situation in terms of everyone's having to rely on the government? Um, suddenly everyone's going to owe the government money. When like, People that get seed bills and stuff, the, the government is securing it. So we're going to have all these people in debt to the government. Do you think yeah. it might be, a bit, might, might be something to do with and conspiracy theories aside? Do you think it might be the government's way of controlling the people? Potentially. Like, listen, it could potentially be that, but it, it depends what conspiracy theories you follow and depends what you actually believe. If you go with just the general public's view, the government are there to run the country and the government are making sure that, that people who are losing their income, losing their, uh, their way are, are, are getting help and businesses are not closing down and people are not losing their jobs through keeping the, the furlough retention scheme and all that sort of stuff. So like, the fact that the government are stepping in and coming up with all this money is, is great. Um, now you should be using using it wisely and, and things like that instead of bitching and moaning about it. Um, like it's it's interesting all these like self employed people going on about how they're not entitled to anything. Well, they are entitled to something because it's calculated off your tax returns. 
So clearly they weren't submitting the, the correct tax. Like, do you know the amount of people moaning and bitching that they're only getting X amount of money? Well, if they paid the right money in the first place into the system, they could then withdraw from Yeah, them. yeah. No, it's very true, very true. Okay, so um, this week then, we were talking about how to find good property deals. So I thought what, what maybe we could do is just scan through, you know, all the, the main strategies that there are, so that the, the we teach and, and, uh, and do ourselves. So you've got your buy, refurbish, your finance, HMOs. Uh, let's do buy. Let's do lease options, buy, refurbish, your finance, and HMOs. How's that sound? Uh, yeah, good. Okay, so it, it really, let's, uh, let's what, 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 what are we going to start with? Let's start with HMOs. HMOs, right. First, you've got to decide on your area. Pick yep. your area. So we're not going to, I'm not going to go into ha, ha, doing due diligence on areas, but you've got to have a good area that you've done your due diligence on. Pick uh, an area, go on somewhere like spare room, look for demand. Yeah, check. And, and, and work out whether it's a good area and what the prices are, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then determine what you're actually... What are you looking to achieve? Are you looking to achieve somewhere or buy somewhere that needs converting into a HMO or something that's already up and running? Um, yeah. I've, got, I've got investors that want both. Um, my preferred option here is buy, refurbish, refinance into HMO as opposed yeah. to buy, refurbish into single let. So I would always be looking for properties that need a full, that, that need refurb or conversion because you're going to have to do a lot of work anyway. So you might as well do it all and start from the beginning because it will probably save you money. Um, than having to make good good properties at the minute. Um, so how to find HMOs? I would just use, honestly, there's so many advertised online. Uh, right Move, Zoopla, also Spare Room, uh, contact Spare Room, direct to vendor landlords, uh, and just try and negotiate them down um, and do it that way. How else, how else do you think you would find HMOs? Well, you're looking for, you're looking, when I used to, um, I don't look quite so much anymore, but I used to be on the lookout all the time, especially in the Midlands area around Walsall and Wolverhampton. Yeah. And you're looking for three or four, I was looking for three or four bed houses that had two reception rooms, yeah. all of a decent size, close to the city centre, mm -hmm. um, you know, within, within walking distance of the city centre, of whichever city you're looking in. And that we're, and that we're in, you know, obviously if you're in Barry Furbish Finance, we'll come on to that, but just HMOs, I would like to know it was in decent condition that I could go in and, and, and you know, didn't have any, anything massively wrong with it. I could add the fire doors and, you know, um, yeah, et cetera. The, but one of yeah, the at least one like, bathroom, ideally two. Yeah, one of the things I like is taking what would be a three-bedroom property and making them into five-bed HMOs. Because if you, if you do this in the right area with the right type of property, like all Victorian properties are really good because the bedrooms are generally quite big. So the square footage for the rooms are generally quite big. So if you look for a three bedroom property where all the rooms, if, so you want a three bedroom property with two reception rooms really and a big kitchen and, if, uh, and a couple of bathrooms like in there, which you can find quite easily on in certain areas. But so... It, the bedrooms, as long as they're over a hundred square foot, then you don't need a communal area. So you could take a the problem with five. The problem with five bed HMOs is the whole the licensing thing, and it's like sometimes you're better off with four. Um, I do think, like, listen, I actually do think that I think you're better with four or six. Like yeah. five, it's just it's, it's it's like it's just the extra effort and the costings to make it into a compliant HMO licensed. It's just not worth it for one extra room, I don't think. I think you're better I, I agree. Than two extra rooms. Now, that's yeah. not to say, for all you people that are going to jump on this, that's not to say that like a four-bedroom HMO is, doesn't need to be compliant. It still does. It just doesn't have to be licensed. But yeah. there's additional license and things you have to do that you wouldn't normally have to do for four-bed. So, yeah. so I, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm either looking for a three-bed with two reception rooms so I can get four bedrooms, have one communal room and a kitchen, Mm -hmm. Or you could go for what you said, have have a large four bed Victorian house, say, that you can maybe get two reception rooms out of because obviously they're quite often quite big, and then bang, you've got six bedrooms. For yeah. me, they're the kind of the, the properties that I'm kind of looking for. Again, you can look for existing HMOs, which which is useful, um, which you can find on on Right Move. But I think the, the main thing is doing the due diligence on the area and finding out. So the things that you need to know, you need to know, number one, is there a demand? You can find that out by, look, by looking. Are there people looking for rooms? You can look on things like spare room, et cetera. Number two, what are the demand? What are they prepared to pay? 
mm-hmm. uh, how much they're prepared to pay, and then what are the property prices to give them that? Because HMOs work everywhere, but the price doesn't. The price of the room doesn't massively change depending on where you go. So if you go somewhere like Watford, I was looking looking at the other day on one of the webinars. We're looking at Watford, and I think the price the HMOs were renting out for like five hundred pound a room, but it was three hundred grand to buy the house. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Hull, they rent for £350 a room. So it's a bit less, but not massively. Yes. And it's like 50 grand, or no, maybe not 50 I, um, grand, but per house. My HMOs in Hull get between £75 and £80 pound a, a room, per, per room, per property. Apart from one room and one property. Only a get, week though, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Apart from one room and one property get 65 because it's, it's like a single room. But um, it's obviously 70 square feet, but it's a single room. Um, but my property in Wolverhampton, um, that gets like one of the rooms gets four eighty a, uh, a month, so uh, and another ones get four twenty. So like yeah, you're right. The prices don't vary that much. But incidentally, I was just doing a little bit of research um, this morning, and I was looking in like southeast London, like Stratford, uh, places like that, and rooms there are getting are only getting five fifty, five seven five. So yeah, um, and they're double rooms, exactly. so that's London. Yeah. And whereas the house will cost much more, so you're better off buying in a slightly cheaper area. So that's HMOs. Roughly, that's how you look for them. You can find them on Right Move, etc. You've then got, let's talk about lease options. So lease option agreements, uh, very, very quickly, a lease option is where, just in case you don't know, a lease option is where you agree to buy the house down the line. When I say agree, you have an option to buy the house down the line and you rent it off them in the, in the, in the meantime or you pay them a, a guaranteed rent in the meantime. It's kind of what it is. The great thing about that is you're covering a mortgage normally, so you can rent it out, stop making cash flow straight away. Yeah. And because house houses tend to go up in value, I mean, this year, we're talking about on the newsletter on what the property market is going to do this year, but over time, they tend to go up in value. So it means that you've got a very good chance of getting a really good deal in five years' time. So if you were looking for a lease option type agreement, um, what are the sort of things that you look for in, in a property? Okay, so you're looking for properties that are typically in negative equity. Um, so properties that are on the market today for um, more or the same as what, sorry, less, less, less or the same as what they paid for them when they bought them. Now, the mm. best place for this is in the Northeast um, because the, a, lot of, like a lot of areas in the Northeast have not recovered from the 2008 uh, property boom. Uh, property sort of explosion um, and when I, make, when I say explosion I don't mean good I mean bad um, obviously 2008 property crash um, so there's a lot of properties in that area that are still in negative equity and they're, they're still not recovered um, because 2006 2007 2008 you've got lenders such as Northern Rock who no longer exist uh, were, were issuing 125% mortgages so people could borrow 25% higher than the actual value of the property they were living in so you've got so many properties that are in negative equity or the people owe too much on the mortgage. Um, and it's just like, they're great opportunities. Um, and also like on, if you look on Rightmove and just pick a, pick a town up north, you'll find properties that have been on the market for 10 years and they, they can't sell them because they can't afford to drop the price down. And if they drop the price down to its real market value, they then have to pay the mortgage company back. And they probably can't do that. So they're stuck. So they're, they're fine mm. options, but obviously lease options come with risk as with all strategies and there's legal obligations that the vendor and the, the buyer has to comply with. So. Yeah. And by the way, in a minute, we're going to totally get, in a minute, we're going to give you guys a really sneaky way. Most people don't know about of finding these rather than trawling through finding these deals like that, like that every click of a finger you found a new deal is, is unbelievable. Okay, so yeah, basically lease options, you're looking for houses. That, and a lot of people seem to think that lease options need to also fit the criteria of being a HMO or, be, but, or being a service company. But actually that's just not, the, I mean, obviously if they do, brilliant. But that's actually not the case, is it? And for a lease option, it could, it could be anything. It could be a single let, it could be a HMO, it could be a... But typically, with lease options, um, because you're, you're agreeing to basically pay their mortgage, their mortgage payments might be quite high. So you, you've got to make sure you make profit. Otherwise, there's no point in doing the deal um, because obviously you're taking on the responsibility of the maintenance of the property. So Yeah, so you, you need to look at the, uh, the rental. I always work on you want to be making at least £200 a month. 
Yeah. Um, I, I would want more, to be honest. I, I wouldn't do it for 200 pound a month. Um, I just, it's just not worth the hassle, but I would want more. But yeah. It just, depends, on, depends, on, depends on the deal. But I would say, if you can make 200 pound a month profit, so first of all, you've got to look at your costs. So I would say, whatever the, whatever the, um, whatever the mortgage payments are, then you've got to allocate 10% for voids mm -hmm. uh, and, temp and management and 10% for uh, maintenance. So yeah. work all that out. If you're still making £200 a month clean on top, I would say it's a goer. Yeah. If you're not, then you're not going to make any cash flow. There's probably no point doing it because you, you, you want to do it for the cash flow with the bonus to be able to buy it down the line, not all for buying it down the line. The, the, the problem with... If with making less than two hundred pound, or I, like I know people that have done lease options, but they're only making like ninety to hundred pound a month, and I'm like, what is the point? Now I know they're hoping for the uplift at the end, but what happens if the boiler breaks in the meantime? What happens yeah, if yeah, I agree. one of the windows break or the the tap? Well, if the boiler breaks in the meantime, that could be your entire <laughs> yearly earnings gone like that. I agree. That's what I said. I mean, maybe you'd look for more, but I if, I would say that. To, if you're confident with the 10% maintenance and the 10% management fee and voids and, and everything, if you, if you can do that and go, I'm still going to make £200 a month, I would say it was a good deal. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Next, Barry Furbish Refinance, my absolute favourite. Yeah, so Barry Furbish Refinance, what are you looking for, Alastair? The, Alastair Cunningham, what are you looking for? The, the shittiest, messiest, ugliest, the most hideous disgustingly decorated, filthy, needle-ridden property you can find on the market. See, when I found this out, I tried to buy Alistair's flat and he was offended. Oh. I was offended. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really, the horror list is disgusting. Do yeah. I need to buy your apartment? The, most, the more problems, the better. The yeah. more problems, the better. Because I'm not going to be doing the work. I'm not even going to be going there to see it. Right? Do you know what I mean? I'll get somebody else to do that for me. So the more problems, the better. You're looking for properties that need that you could potentially add value to, um, and let it let it realise its true value again. Um, typically, properties uh, that are probate uh, that have um, just been neglected for years and years and years that have never been decorated have yellow coloured like like yellow walls where the people smoke inside. Uh, Is that yellow walls that on your uh, looks yellow? No, no, it does actually, but it's not. I don't smoke, um, <laughs> and like. The old gas fires in the front room, the no central heating, all this sort of stuff. Um, the, the, the biggest ways to add, pro add value to property is kitchens and bathrooms and extensions. Um, but I wouldn't, get into, I wouldn't get involved in the extension side of things. I would just be adding value with kitchens, bathrooms, decorations, plumbing systems, all that sort of stuff, and bring up to true market value. And, there is, and this is not a strategy that you can do just up north. You can do this in the south. Like I'm doing one in Bedford, which is... Midlands, pretty much. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's all good. So, awesome, man, awesome. Okay, so if you're looking on right move, you're scrolling through the pictures and you're looking for ones that basically look horrible. Yeah. So anything you can find that looks horrible, that could be a potential potential lead. And yeah. the idea is that you get it. You want to you want to agree the price. Let's say there's a street value. If it was nice, it would be a hundred grand. You want to be getting it way below that. So that when you when you buy it for say fifty grand and you spend twenty grand doing it up, it's now worth a hundred grand. So you make all that 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 that. I'll tell you in the very quickly the easiest way to work out if you're going to pull out all your money out. Um, basically, use an example of a hundred thousand pound house. We know we can get a seventy five percent loan to value mortgage at the end of it. So we know that we'll be able to borrow seventy five thousand pound from the bank. Okay, so you want your purchase cost and all of your refurb costs to come in at less than 75. Less than 75 grand. And if it does, you've got a very good chance of pulling all your money out. Now you might have a few thousand pound here or there, but you, you'll have a very good chance of pulling all your money out. All right. Now I just promised that I would give everyone a really sneaky, awesome way to find all these properties. So I'm going to tell you what it is. Now this is actually an app that was designed by one of our students and I first came into contact with this app when we were running a program called the Deal Finding Extravaganza. This app is, is, is 
unbelievable. Okay, so what happened was we, we did a task where people had to go and find certain the de- some of the deals that we've been through now. And after an hour, I mean, it's quite difficult when you go through and you uh, let's have a look at all, check all the information, oh no, and you're going through each one. And people have found like four deals and things like that in, in the in the in the hour session, having their coaches go around. And I was I was on stage, I was going through, and this one guy said, um, I said, how many deals he found? He said 124. I was like, 124 deals an hour. I said, I do not believe you. I said, show me. And he went through, sure enough, deal. I, I didn't check all of them, but I went through about four or five of his deals. It was like, yes, yes. I was like, oh, that, is, that is amazing. How on earth did you do that? And he said, I used an app called Deal Saucer. Now, I'd heard of this app because the student of ours that created it, he tried to tell me about it. And I've got to be honest, I wasn't particularly interested in it at the time because I thought it sounded complicated and messy. But this was like the first time it was like, whoa, what's, what's kind of gone on here? So uh, we should get him on the show, actually, one of the weeks talking about it. But so anyway, I, download, I downloaded the app and it is insane. So let me just tell you some of the things that you can do on this app, you're finding some of the deals that we just talked you about. You can do it the traditional way, you can do it on right move. Can you screen share? I can, but most people listening, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be, that, yeah. wouldn't be that helpful anyway. Um, so if you, for example, want to want a lease option agreement, so you need to find a house in negative equity. Yeah. Normally what you do is you search on right move, you look at the house, you then go into the sold history. You fi- scroll through to find if it's sold, if it's on there. You find the sold price. You match it up and you see if it matches. On the Deal Sourcer app, <laughs> right, you go on, you click, you type in your area, and you click negative equity, the, the uh, button, and it shows all the houses in the area that are in negative equity. Yeah. And if you click on one, it will say to you, for example, the address is, I'm just on, on there now, the address is 57. I won't say because they're all probably spam this person, but here's the address. Bang, 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 bang. Here's the postcode. Do you know how normally you can't find the postcode? I'm right. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. All right. Here's the postcode. So if you want to write them a letter, at least option agreement letter, bang, it's there. Here's the address. Here's the postcode. This property was sold for 157500 in 2004. It's been on the market for five months and now it's up for 125 grand. So it's sold for. One hundred and fifty-seven thousand pounds in two thousand and four, five hundred in two thousand and four. Now it's one hundred twenty-five. Bang! Straight, straight, straight away. Yeah. There, you know, there it is. And there's just a big list of them. You haven't got all the hassle. They're just there on the Deal Source app. It's insane. Okay. Then, right? Then, if you if you're interested in buy refurbished refinance properties, and you just click another button, same thing. Next to, the negative, next to the negative equity button that says refurb. And what the app does is it's got software that looks at the photographs on Rightmove and if it can tell if they're horrible and if they are horrible, it sticks it in the refurb thing. So rather than you having to look at all of them, looking for the horrible ones, they're just there. Obviously, you're going to want to go on and check it and make sure that it, that it works, but, but they're just there. So you've got that, which, which is insane. You've also got the HMO. It does the same thing. It goes through finding relevant HMOs, existing HMOs, potential HMOs, puts them all there. But not only that, but it also tells you the ROI. It works it all out for you. You can click on, click on a property and just click on analyze. That's it. Analyze. You can also use it with, with another right move link. If you've got a right move link, you put it on, right? <laughs> this is just insane. You click analyze. It comes up. With all the breakdown, including like how much the stamp duty would be, what, how much the rental income, it's, it, it's got like a tool that searches to work out how much the average rent would be in that area and what it estimates the rent to be, uh, the legal costs, the refurb costs even. You can add in any other costs, what the, like everything. And then it works out the ROI, how much cash you'd have to put in. It's what, it's just, it's just insane. Yeah, it's just it's, unbelievable. I, it. I do think it's fit. I, I think it's very good. I think it's very it's good. Just, well, how do you think Alistair sells so many deals through Better Source? Because he knows how to find the deals because they're there for you. It's, I mean, obviously, now here's the thing, right? This app is not, it doesn't replace the deal source of them. What this app does is it replaces a bad deal source. So, what a bad deal source would do is they would go online, they'd find what looked on paper looked like a great deal, and then they sell it, right? 
what this does is it finds all the deals that are good on paper. Your job after you found all this is to go and view it, check it out, do prop. Don't just take its word for the rental valuation. No. Do proper due diligence. Yeah. Don't just take its word that it's BMV. It's, it's really clever and it's doing all the computer analysis. It doesn't replace the human brain. But what it does do is it does all the donkey work for you. It's like having a virtual assistant who can go and do all the donkey work to find all the deals. And then you, the expert, come in and look at it and go, yeah, actually, that is really good. Actually, that one's not. It's, it's just unbelievable. And now it's, um, it's 40, I think it's 45 pound a month. But we've agreed a deal with Ashley. Ashley Rudland's the creator of this app, along with his business partner, Andreas. But we've agreed a deal with him that if you use the, uh, the code, just type in Samuel Leeds, Samuel with the deal actually, obviously. But if you say Samuel Leeds when you download the app, then you, you get it for thirty five ninety nine. So I think it takes nine quid off the off the monthly price. But when you consider the work that it does, yeah, thirty five ninety well, 40, it's meant to be forty five quid, but thirty six quid a month with the code. No. It's Is insane. There a link in description. Is there a link in description? We, we'll, we'll add one. I mean, we're obviously filming this, so it isn't right now. But yeah, we'll add a link. We'll put the bonus code. But when I sort of, I always, this is too good for us not to share because it's it is just, it's uh, unbelievable. It is yeah. un freaking leaveable. I, I haven't got enough, uh, what's the word? Superlatives? Yeah. What's the word? That anyway, I haven't got enough of them to talk about this. But if you want to speed up how fast you find deals, you've got to download this app. Oh, and by the way, you get a seven day free trial. So you could try, what you could do is you're really tight and you can't afford the, the can't afford the 35.99, download it, find loads of these, write them all down. You've got seven days, abuse it for seven days and then cancel. And then, and then um, you've got seven days worth of leads to go up. But I would recommend just using it in general, to be honest, because it is, yeah. it is insane. Right, Amazing. it's now time for this. Okay, so we are going to be talking about in the news this week, uh, what is actually going to be happening with property prices now that we're coming out of the coronavirus and what's going to be happening in general with the property markets. What do you yeah, think? which is obviously something that we've both been keeping our eye on very much because we're both uh, obviously property investors and one of the first rules of property and any investing actually, and you've made the most of this, I know with oil and things like that, but you want to buy when the price is down. When it starts dipping and everyone's scared, that's when you get in because it's going to go up again. And once it starts going up again, it's too late. Did I tell I got out my oil because it started dipping. Yeah. I, uh, how much did you make out of the oil? Uh, I cashed out 4,000 in the end, 4,018 uh, 4, pounds. So I put... So you made about three and a half grand. I made profit. about three and a half grand, yeah. Um, so that's really good. Like, we're doing no work in like a week. It's like a yeah. full-time salary. It is really, it's really good. You know, when you get more into now, you're sort of doing this. He started trading quite a bit with little bits in the meantime. Once he, um, you, you need to, what you need to do is become an expert trader. Yeah. And then you need to start teaching people how to trade. Yeah. You're a great teacher. I'm a great teacher. I know that. I'm really good at teaching. Uh, You've got, um, and you just need to get really good at FX now. You're doing it yourself. You're making, yeah. you're making the money yourself, but you need to get really expert good. So yeah. you can start teaching it because I don't think people would be interested. Oh, yeah. But anyway, property prices. So uh, I read an article this morning uh, from Aviva, uh, the insurance provider, and they're predicting property prices will dip between 10 and 12%. Uh, they're okay. anywhere between 10 and 12%. And that's, what they are, that's what they are factoring their whole business on and all their insurance policies on and all that sort of stuff. I've looked into it quite a bit. I've seen, I, I've seen 7 to 10 so uh, I suppose we're probably safe to say somewhere between seven and twelve percent ish. The reality, uh, is I think it, it's going to it's going to go down a little bit, but I think with all the money, think about all the money that's been put into the market. Uh, how many billions has been generated and thrown into the public domain through bounce back loans, Seabill loans, freaking furlough payments, all this sort of stuff that's got to be spent in the economy. Like, so I know so many property people that are using bounce back loans to buy property. So the, 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 the demand is still there. Really? So, yeah. You're not allowed to do that, are you? You are as long as the, you're not allowed to personally benefit from a bounce back loan. 
So your business can benefit from a bounce back loan, but there's there's ways around it, and there's there's I don't know the exact details of it. I, I, I would imagine that you're not. I imagine the, the whole point of bounce back loan is to help you when you're struggling, not so you can go and invest it in a profit. The whole purpose of bounce back loan is to help your business bounce back. So if your business was like, for instance, I was in the middle of buying a property before this all started, and I've lost out in that property, and I've also lost out in about four grand in fees that I paid beforehand. So technically, I've lost out on a property. I'm buying another one, obviously. I'm completing that next couple of days. But um, the, I was having, we were chatting about this on the Academy webinar all night. Um, and that there's people that are using it to buy, to invest in property. Um, and wow. they're using it creatively to, to bounce their business back to shape. I'd but, look into that before you take that advice on board, guys. I'll check the, the legalities of that. We... Um, well, one of the uh, guy, the guys, one of the guys was on the, the call. He's done all the research. He's even confirmed it with his bank, and they're happy with it. They're fine with it. Um, Dude, I'm up for it if, they, if they're happy with it. But I just it doesn't. Um, I know that C bills isn't like that. Well, C bills is different because that's bigger companies. But uh, I've I've not personally looked into bounce back in the sense of I don't know no, the no, terms mate. and conditions. Um, but I'm just going by what I've heard from people on our calls and things okay. like that. The general yeah, yeah. consensus. So my point being is. People are going to be spending money, right? So when the, when there's when there's demand for the product, that puts the price up, not down. So I think the price yeah. might for a little while, but it, I think it will definitely come back. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I probably come back with a vengeance as well, because we know after every recession comes expansion, and I'm not saying we're in recession, but after every downturn, there's normally an upturn. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's it. Just that's how it works, isn't it? Recession, expansion, recession, expansion. But I think uh, so. I think that's kind of the best. I mean, we'll keep you updated if anything changes. Obviously, on the show for our regular listeners. But yeah. I think we're looking at around yeah, looking at around about a ten percent drop this year. Yeah. Uh, but bear in mind that like, in London over the last year there was a five percent rate from last year to this year. So it's not. We're not talking massive figures. Do you know what I mean? We're not talking. Um, we're not talking crazy. Okay, so where about in the country do you think is going to be worst hit? With the, I, I would have thought London. Do you not agree? Well, when you think about it, potentially, yeah, because ten percent off the price of a property in London can be a lot of money compared yeah. to ten percent of a property property in Stoke, in, Hull. in the Hall or whatever. Like the average yeah. price in Hull is what seventy grand. Not going ten percent off yeah. that seventy grand. Not also, general rule is every, everywhere follows London, so I think London will get hit the worst to begin with yeah maybe i imagine. i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see but I, where do you think uh i i kind of agree down south and then it'll up it'll go up but um in areas in a lot of areas up north they still haven't even gone up since the last time <laughs> so are they gonna fall further mm. i can't see them fall much further like, no like when you've hit rock bottom <laughs> then not unless you start digging there's not a lot of other places to go is there I mean uh, you got houses for, ha for like you know three bed houses for 40 grand I mean how much does it cost to build a three bed house from scratch do you know what I mean more than that like more than that so anyway that's what I think uh, that's what you think um, yeah there you go well guys thank you ever so much for tuning in make sure you download the app we'll put a link in the description and uh, don't forget to subscribe to, to our channel of course and don't forget to give us some love hit us up with some questions um you know we'd love to know any questions and leave us a review if you're listening to this i know i was looking at our reviews the other day we've got quite a lot of nice reviews but we, need, we want more so if you're listening to this on I itunes or whatever i didn't know we had the opportunity for review yeah. On, I, on iTunes, we got you know we've got about four point five star rated. We are. Oh, dude, I didn't know. I'm gonna have to look. So we'd we'd, we'd love some reviews, guys. That would be that would be amazingly kind. And let us know that you reviewed. We'll give you a shout out on here for your, your lovely reviews. So thank you ever so much, and we will see you same time next week.